With linear motion, let's start with the parameters we use to measure the motion of objects. So we're going to start with three, uh, three things, acceleration, velocity, and position. And we're going to start by considering uniform acceleration, um, just because that makes the discussion a little bit easier. We're going to expand that to changing accelerations as we go on, but let's just start with uniform acceleration. Now we know that acceleration is how the velocity changes with time. So I can make a graph of the acceleration as a function of time. And if I'm talking about uniform acceleration, then that's just going to be a straight line, right? Because it's not changing. So this is our time going that way. We have our acceleration, and the acceleration isn't changing. And then if I imagine looking at an object and I ask, well, what happens to its velocity between, say, its initial point and the final point where this object is moving from and to, uh, what happens to the velocity? Well, if I know what the acceleration is and I know how long it's accelerating for, so if I know the amount of time we're accelerating for, and I know the amount we're accelerating by, then I can get the velocity by saying the final velocity is just equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times this change in time. And this is true anywhere along this line. Um, so I can generalize that to say the velocity as a function of time is just equal to this. So if I know what time I'm observing it at, I know the acceleration that's occurring, I know what velocity it started at, I can get the final velocity. Now if you'll notice, this factor right here is the area under this curve, right? Because I've got A is the height, that's A, and I've got T is the width, and width time height is area. Uh, so that tells me um, that this is a linear equation and I can draw the velocity now as a line, right? Where the slope of that line, the slope is the acceleration. Okay, and I'm just graphing that equation right there as a function of time. So you can see that there's a connection between acceleration and velocity. That if I can measure the velocity and know how the velocity is changing, the slope of that line for a constant acceleration is going to be the uh, acceleration. And this is going to be a linear uh, relationship. But I can also do the same thing with distance, right? So I can look at this graph and I can say, well, I have my uh, initial velocity here, and I have my final velocity here. And if you imagine, breaking this up into a little triangle here, that the position, the final position, is going to be equal to the initial position plus the area under this curve of the velocity diagram. Because I have the uh, how the position would change because of the initial velocity, so this is v initial times delta t. And then I also have how much the velocity is changing in it because of the fact, or how much the position is changing because of the velocity changing with time, which is going to be this area right here. Now this right here, if you think about you know, looking at the slope of this line, that's just a times delta t. And this right here is just delta t. Right? So I have a triangle with a height and a base. Right? So I can write down what this uh, area is going to be that my final velocity, or my final position, is just going to be my initial position plus this area here. That's v initial times delta t plus this area here, which is going to be 1 half the height times the width. Right? And I can generalize that to this. My final position is equal to my initial position plus my initial velocity times time 
plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. And if we make a graph of that, um, that is going to be a curve because of this quadratic term here. We're going to get a curve that looks like that, where we have x as a function of time. And at every point along this line, the slope is the velocity, but the velocity is constantly increasing. So that's where our fundamental equation describing the motion of objects at constant acceleration comes from.